Cool, before we dive into projectile motion in two dimensions, I just want to do a quick review of projectile motion in one dimension, just to see the relevance here and how similar they are. So we're gonna take <clears throat> a ball here. We're gonna throw it straight vertical, straight up in the air with a velocity of 49 meters per second. So and the questions we wanna find out are how long is it in the air? What's its max height? What's its velocity as it comes back down and stuff like that. So you should know its velocity at its apex. What's the velocity at its apex? Zero. What's the acceleration at the apex? What's the acceleration acting on this ball through the entire journey? Yeah, gravity, 9.8 meters per second squared downward the whole time. So the acceleration doesn't change, but the velocity is what's always changing, hence acceleration. And in this case, the acceleration, again, 9.8 meters per second squared all the, down all the time. So, but the velocity is slowing down on the way up and then hits zero at its apex and then accelerates downward all the way down. Cool. <clears throat> so, and in this case, we're key to this is first by finding time. And if you split this up into two problems, we'll find the time up and then how do we get the time down from that? We're just gonna double it. So in this case, we're starting at a certain initial velocity. It's gonna take gravity, in this case, 49 meters per second. It's gonna take gravity a certain amount of time to slow it all the way down to zero. So, and then it'll take gravity the same amount of time to speed it all the way back up to that initial velocity of 49, at which time you'd have the same exact displacement except downward instead of upward, so on and so forth. So in this case, 49 meters per second is the initial velocity at its apex. It's going to have a velocity of zero. How do I figure out how long it takes to get there? <clears throat> Excuse me, to that apex. Use the last equation. Yeah, we'll definitely use the last equation there, or just essentially the definition of acceleration. So notice, with an acceleration due to gravity of 9.8 meters per second squared, and I'm just going to write down whether that's positive or negative, I'll worry about later, but <clears throat> it's always down. So, and again, I don't like saying meters per second squared. I like saying meters per second per second. So I chose 49 here for a reason. What if I chose 98 for a minute? If I chose 98 meters per second, how long would it take gravity to slow it all the way down to a velocity of zero? 10 seconds, that would have been even easier. Since it's only 49 meters per second, how long is that gonna take? Five seconds. So, and as you pointed out, we can use the last equation there. So V final equals V initial plus AT. Essentially, that's just the definition of acceleration rearranged. Final velocity for the first half of the journey is zero. Initial was 49 meters per second plus acceleration times time will solve time. Now we gotta be careful. What direction is the velocity all the way up there? It's positive or up. And, and what direction is the acceleration point? down, so we gotta make it negative. So in this case, because they're not pointing the same direction, gotta be careful of your signs. So we'll make this negative 9.8 meters per second squared. One thing to note, a lot of people will say, if your velocity and acceleration point in opposite directions, make this a minus sign. Well, I just tack it in as acceleration being negative itself, rather than actually putting a minus sign into the equation. So sometimes people teach this as two equations, one with a plus, one with a minus, depending, and I'm not gonna teach it that way, just enough way. Uh, and if we solve for this, time definitely equals five seconds. So, and that's just up. So then your time total is going to equal 10 seconds, another five seconds going back down. So, and in this case, <clears throat> what'll be the final velocity right as it hits the ground? Also 49 meters per second down. Cool. Now, what are we fortunately ignoring throughout this entire problem? Air, air resistance. What would air resistance do? It's going to slow it down. So in this case, would I really reach, oh, we haven't actually figured out the max height yet, but would it really take, um, actually, I'm going to ask that question in just a sec, because we're going to find the max height. What is the max height that we actually reach at the apex? So and where'd you get 49 from? It's not 49. 49. So, so do we have acceleration? Yes, so if we wanted the, the displacement here, essentially, for the first half of the journey, that would guess our height at the apex. What equation do we want to use? So we could definitely use the second one. So delta x equals v initial t plus 1 half a t squared, except that's not my favorite. I like the first one myself. So we definitely could get it off this 
first equation if we wanted to. So, but I like the average velocity. We know both the initial and final velocity. So in this case, the initial velocity is 49 meters per second. The final velocity is zero. What's the average velocity for the first half of the journey up there? Uh, half of 49. So in this case, yeah, 24.5 meters per second. And how long did we say the first half of the journey was? And I'm calling this delta x, what could I have pretty much called this? Could have been calling this delta y the whole time since it's vertical, whatever. <clears throat> and what did you say that came out to, Kat? 122.5. Great. Now, if there really was air resistance, what would happen to this number? It's not really that. Yeah, it would not quite be this high. So. What would happen to my average velocity? It would be less than that because, you know, I'd never, uh, gravity would be slowing me down the entire time as compared to having no air resistance. Would the time up, five seconds up, would it also be five seconds back down? Well, one, it wouldn't be five seconds anymore, right? It would be. It's a little tricky because all the way up, gravity's slowing me down. So is it going to take longer or less time to reach a velocity of zero? All right, it's going to take less time to reach a velocity of zero. So all the way up, it's going to be shorter than five seconds. So, but what about down? So think about the extreme example. So on the up, we just found out it's going to be less than five seconds. But let's look at down. Think about a feather. If I drop a, I don't know if we've talked about this yet, but if I drop a bowling ball and a feather on the moon, which one hits the ground first? Same. same. They both experience the same gravity, and there's no air resistance. It's air resistance that slows the feather down so much. So if we use the feather, it's a great example on planet Earth of something that experiences lots of air resistance. So think about it, dropping the feather on the moon and then dropping the feather on Earth. Does it take this? I guess it doesn't really. Let's say on Earth in a vacuum. That way we still look at the same gravity versus on Earth, not in a vacuum. In which case is it going to take a lot longer for the feather to reach the ground? So yeah, in just without the vacuum, just plain old on Earth, because it's going to experience a lot of air resistance. Air resistance is going to slow it down, so it's going to take longer to reach the ground. So in this case, our journey up is going to be less than five seconds, but our journey down, I don't know if it's going to be more or less than five seconds. I do know it'll be longer than the journey up, whatever that comes out to be. Cool. So we just want to qualitatively look at the effects of air resistance. We're not going to do anything quantitative with that, though, at all. OK, so keep in mind this. We're about to start with projectile motion. So with projectile motion, it's a two-dimensional problem. We're going to fire some projectile off at some angle above the horizontal. So and it's going to travel and then come back down and land somewhere up the way. Classic projectile motion. The problem with this, it's not a one-dimensional problem. This velocity right here has components in both the horizontal and the vertical direction. So making this also more difficult is we only have acceleration in one of those two directions. In which direction do we have acceleration? The vertical. In the horizontal direction, as long as we're ignoring air resistance, there's no acceleration to speak of whatsoever. So in the horizontal direction, what equation would we be using with no acceleration in the horizontal direction? Yeah, all we've got in the horizontal direction is delta x equals vxt. But in the vertical direction, we do have acceleration. We've got to go with the second set of equations. We've got to, you know, four different equations that might be involved in doing some calculations with the vertical direction. Uh, it totally depends on the situation, so which one we'd end up using. But we might use more than one of them as well. And depending on the situation, we might use one versus another as well. Chris? Why is the acceleration only up? So which way does gravity point? Down, which is vertical. And so gravity only operates in the vertical direction. It does not operate in the horizontal direction. So notice we never fall sideways. We fall up, you know, we fall down. We don't fall up, but we fall down. But we never fall sideways. So in this case, so gra with no gravity in the x direction, the horizontal direction, this is the only equation we've got. There's no acceleration. So, but in the vertical direction, we'll have to use all the equations that apply when there is uniform acceleration in this case. Cool. Um, if we look at classic projectile motion here, 
one of the first things you want to find with motion in two dimension is time. In fact, it is usually the very first thing you want to figure out. Now, is it due to my motion in this example? Is it due to my motion in the x direction or my motion in the y direction that this journey is going to end? So, and why do you say that? Why do we land? Why does this journey end right there? Is it due to our motion in the horizontal direction or due to our motion in the vertical direction that caused us to end right there? It's the vertical. The gravity's bringing us back down. It's not that we're hitting something going left and right. We're hitting something going, in this case, up, down, in this case, specifically down. Now, let's just say, for instance, we had a building right here, though. If we had a building, then the journey's never going to end there. Where would the journey end? It would end right here. And would it be ending because of our motion in the horizontal direction or our motion in the vertical direction? Horizontal in this case. And so we'd be solving for time using our horizontal equation in this example. But without that building there, we'd be using our vertical equations with ac uniform acceleration to be solving for time instead. So kind of your big difference there. All right, let's work a couple problems. All right, the problem we have at hand here is we've got a football kicked with a velocity of 98 meters per second 30 degree, at an angle of 30 degrees above the horizontal. Now, one thing, I know that you, nobody in the universe can kick a football with a velocity of 98 meters per second. It's just an example with nice, convenient numbers. So in case you didn't think I knew that, I know that. It's really fast. So, but in this case, we want to know some questions and a whole host of questions, but the, the first question I want to ask, that's the key to answering every other question. Time. So in this case, this thing's going to eventually reach the ground. There's no building over here or anything like that. It's just going to eventually reach the ground. And we want to know, <clears throat> my first question for you is, is this journey ending because of, our, uh, of what's going on in the horizontal direction or what's going on in the vert vertical direction? Vertical. So we're going to use our vertical equations to figure this out. So our velocity, though, points in both the horizontal and vertical direction as components in both. And we need to split this up first. So in this case. If we've got this 98 meters per second, part of that points in the x direction, part of that points in the y direction. <coughs> and I want to find those components. How do I split this back up into components? Remind me. So let's go x component first. What's going to be the x component of this velocity? Yeah, 98 meters per second times sine. Oh, oh, not sine. Why is it not sine? Yeah, this is the adjacent side. Cool. And what about the y component? Yeah, so 98 meters per second times the sine, since this is the opposite side. Cool. Can somebody get me values for that? Either way. Well, Yeah. So it turns out sine of 30 is 1 half, and that's why I chose this angle, because I can do, at least do the sine part of it in my head. So I also chose the example we just did, where something was straight up in the air and coming straight back down for a reason. What was our initial y velocity on that problem we just did? 49 meters per second. What's the initial y component of our velocity right now? 49 meters per second. The y part of this problem is identical to the one we just did. And that's what we're going to use to solve for time here. So in the y direction, we do have uniform acceleration due to gravity in this case. And if I want to find the time, what equation do we want to use here? same one we used back in the day. And so in this case, everything's going to be y components. So for the journey up, what's my final velocity in the y direction only? Zero. And what was the initial y component of the velocity? Good. So plus gravity, I have to make it negative 9.8 because it points opposite our velocity. And we'll solve for time. And what are we still going to get for time? Good. So what's the total time of flight? So five seconds up, five seconds down, 10 seconds total. Cool, now that we know the time of flight, we can solve any other question we want. So what's the next question on the list there? 
Yeah, maximum height. And maximum height deals with, again, the y direction here. We're going to reach the apex. And we already figured this out just a little bit ago, if you recall. What equation did we use to do this? Yeah. Not the only equation we can use, but definitely my favorite. Delta y equals v average t. Our average velocity was that 24.5 meters per second. And the journey up five seconds takes us to our maximum height. And what did that give us again? 1.22. Not 1.22. Let's try this again. So 122.5 meters. Great. OK, next question on the list there. What is the football's velocity as it hits the ground? Well, again, what's the initial x component of the velocity? Zero. Yeah, just the x component, 84.9. Is that ever going to change? Why not? No Good, no acceleration in the horizontal direction, so that's never going to change. The entire, the, the, the velocity, the entire journey is a constant 84.9 meters per second in the horizontal direction. That's never going to change. Okay. So if I ask you, what is the ball's velocity at its apex? What's its velocity at its apex? Well, if I just say the velocity, did I say x velocity, y velocity, or just velocity? Just velocity. So what's the y component of its velocity at the apex zero? But what's the x component? 84.9. So what is its overall velocity at its apex? 84.9 meters per second in the horizontal direction. Great. At any other point, I'd have to have an x component, a y component, and I'd have to add the two together, Pythagorean theorem to get a vector and all that stuff. Cool. But at the end, right there, what will be the x component of the velocity? Good. 84.9 meters per second. What will be the y component of the velocity? Good. 49 meters per second pointing down. So what will be the overall velocity? 98 meters per second. Good, 98 meters per second. If you Pythagorean those back out, you'll get your 98 back. But what angle? The so if we add these tip to tail, I'm going to erase this and go back. So your net vector here is your 98 meters per second. This isn't great, but what angle is that? 30. Yeah, now it's 30 degrees below the horizontal instead. Instead of a positive 49 meters per second for a, a vertical component, it's now a negative 49 meters per second pointing down. Great. So and finally, the last question, what is the net displacement of the football from where it is kicked to where it lands? So we want to know how far this thing traveled in the horizontal direction. Sometimes we call that the range. So we're obviously dealing with the horizontal direction now. And in the horizontal direction, it's our x direction, we do not have an acceleration. So what's the only equation we got? Good, delta x equals vt. x component of the velocity is? So 84.9 meters per second, the entire journey, like you said, is 10 seconds. We can do this one in our head. What is the total horizontal displacement? 849 meters. So again, do you think there's somebody out there who can kick a football, eight and a half football fields long? Yeah, I didn't think so. So like I said, I know the numbers are exaggerated. They're not realistic, whatever. It's a great problem.